thank you uh, Max, very much for this uh, invitation uh, to this presentation and uh, to have an opportunity to let me to have this opportunity to join in a discussion with all the colleagues here. Uh, my name is Chun Fang Zhou, it's a Chinese name because I'm a Chinese. Uh, I have been in uh, 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 I have been uh, working in Danish universities for a long time, since 2008. Before I came to Denmark, um, I uh, finished my bachelor degree in uh, uh, industrial automation and information engineering and uh, master degree in philosophy of science and technology in China. So I started my PhD degree in, in Denmark. Uh, my PhD study was focused on uh, interdisciplinary study about the group creativity in STEM education in problem-based learning environment. So from there, I became a creativity researcher. Uh, I look at my creativity studies mainly in the area of STEM education in different levels, uh, including primary school, middle school, uh, higher education, also involve some work about teacher education. And now I'm associate professor in Department of uh, Mathematics and Computer Science in University of Southern Denmark. And I'm a, one of leadership member in the Center of Science, Education and Communication. Also a research area leader of uh, which is called Children's Life in Center for Primary and Secondary School Education. I'm also a, a member in the Center for AI Science and Application. So this is about who Chun Fang is, uh, where she come from, and uh, then it is time that I start uh, my presentation. Um, the title, you know, is Creativity in STEM Education. It is the call uh, area I'm doing now. Uh, based on uh, the title, today I would like to invite all of you to uh, uh, to start kind of integrative framework that bring studies on creativity, STEM education, teacher education, and the problem-based learning together. Uh, problem-based learning is one of popular pedagogical strategy that we encourage so much in STEM education today. And I hope through uh, today's my talk, um, I can uh, facilitate some kind of rethinking about questions like why uh, should STEM educators uh, pay more attention to creativity? How can we, uh, how can schools and universities foster a creative learning environment? And how can we facilitate the change um, from subject-based to problem-based STEM education? Uh, how can STEM teachers become more skilled in problem-based uh, creative education? Uh, I, but in order to answer those questions, um, I uh, organized my presentation and made the structure. Before uh, we uh, think about the first question, why creativity in STEM education? I think it is good that we start from the question what is creativity? <laughs> what is a cre creativity? I think it is a very interesting question. Uh, some time ago, I read a book which is called Digital Creativity. Uh, the, the author of this book, Bruce once uh, was very nicely wrote the two lines here. We cannot tell you what it is. So we cannot tell you what creativity, but we know it when we see it. It means creativity is uh, very complex, uh, involve different dimensions of understanding. Like uh, from uh, psychological uh, studies, psychologists, they say creativity belongs to intelligence, emotion, or memory, mainly falls on individual personal uh, creative personalities. But from sociologists, they say we study creativity in group work, in social movements, or in the organizational context. Uh, we think creativity is part of organizational culture. And um, also some business researchers, they think creativity is almost the same or a key element in innovation or entrepreneurship. And 
also most of people think about creativity that is uh, linking with arts, media, technology, design, or kind of performance in writing or art uh, or liberal studies. Um, creativity also belongs to different levels, group level, uh, society level, or cultural creativity. So it, it looks like a diamond uh, with different dimensions, uh, different shining points. It's so hard to catch what it is. But still, uh, we need to ask, is creativity a myth? How can uh, we judge what we see as being creative? So we have to be very seriously to look at academic work. Creativity research, um, we can find some writings about the word creativity as early as in ancient Greece and Rome. I don't know how Western people think about this word. But um, when I was a childhood, uh, in my childhood, when I thought about creativity, I know uh, from the Western religion perspective, uh, the God created the whole world. The God created the human being. So uh, it, it, it sounds like a, really a myth for me. But seriously, from academic work, creativity research was studied from uh, 1915s, from uh, basically uh, from psychological approach to force on personal aspect, uh, to think about the characters, attributes. And uh, then from 1970s, some cognition studies uh, force on creativity uh, to uh, think about creative thinking process, um, how to define problem, how to uh, engage in uh, divergent thinking and how to make solution. And then from 1980s, uh, there are sociological approach studies uh, to focus on influences of social and environmental factors on creativity. Because at that time, uh, social uh, psychological researchers, they thought only uh, researching individual uh, person's creativity, it is not enough. Uh, we have to ask for help from social uh, psychological approach, then also social cultural approach also touch this area. Then later from 1990s, we can see there are different approach to integrate psychological, cognitive, sociological, different part of study in this area. So this is also part of reason to bring complexity of creativity research. And um, from so many research, when we define creativity, in general, we have two criteria. The first criteria is to see whether it has the character of novelty, something is, is new, yeah. And another criteria is a usefulness, appropriateness. Um, this means we can understand creativity as kind of ability to produce work that is both novel and appropriate. Here, something novel, something new, that could be something being original or something unexpected. And it can be something new, uh, new to uh, different with others or new uh, uh, to the uh, previous work in history. And also uh, the thing, uh, to be created has to be useful. That means it has to play kind of function in practice. In my own research, I usually describe creativity as kind of generation of new and meaningful perspective, ideas, questions, and come up with solutions to yield defined problems. Um, I have used this definition so much in my research. Um, so. This is the basic general definition about creativity. But link this definition of creativity to the complex issues. We can also find researchers define different kinds of creativity, like big C creativity. It's used to describe big persons who are historical heroes who have done, has done great contributions to human beings or history development in different areas like Mozart, Picasso, or Einstein. But 
uh, not everyone are heroes of history. We, as normal person, we are calling for a kind of everyday creativity. That means everybody can be creative. Uh, creativity can happen everywhere. Um, just like if one student finishes a new report, finishes a new way of homework, our, one of my colleagues find a new way to go to job from home. So this is about little c creativity compared to big c, yeah. And then I also mentioned creativity is different from domain to domain. Creativity in arts is quite different from creativity in business. And uh, also cultural influences. As a Chinese who are working in Denmark and I'm giving a lecture to some colleagues in Sweden. So, so I hope today we are also make a creative dialogue between all of you. And um, also there are some gender differences in creativity studies, like boys and girls. They have different habits, they, they, they have different social values and uh, beliefs. So the ways of thinking, the ways of defining something new and useful are quite different. And um, yeah, these are some basic understanding about creativity. Then let us go to a deeper uh, thinking, why creativity should be part of STEM education. We have to say today we are meeting a crazy world. And I haven't uh, been back to China during past three years due to Corona. And my traveling plan was changed again and again because I think it is full of complexity in this world and we never know what happened tomorrow. It's full of uncertainty, especially in the practice of STEM. And STEM is for solving kind of problem, but the problem is always full of complexity and uncertainty. And overall, uh, we are also meeting the challenges of sustainability, like the UN goals. And we are calling for responsible innovation. We are rethinking how to redesign the ecological system for human beings. So in this science, to meet those challenges in STEM practice, to rethink how to improve the teaching practice in STEM education. We have to say creativity has to be there because it provides kind of opportunity for us um, to suggest our students to keep kind of intrinsic curiosity and the motivation to look for new solutions of problem or to engage the scientific process to look for new discovery of the scientific truth. In this science, we can say there are a lot of slogans about creativity in different documents, like uh, uh, it is on the top level of learning skills in 21st century skills. It has been argued for one of key employability skills uh, for graduate students. And also uh, it uh, closely linked with problem solving skills and modeling data analysis and uh, uh, statistics. So uh, it is uh, standing on the central between uh, computational thinking and the mathematical thinking. Anyway, uh, creativity should be paid more attention in this science, in STEM education. Then uh, from uh, a knowledge framework, I want to emphasize only education is not enough because knowledge in STEM exist at least four uh, puzzles, four uh, part in this framework. Uh, one is education we mentioned, another one is discipline. And uh, education is about how to organize discipline, how to teach knowledge in discipline. And uh, it also needs to link with practice um, to give opportunities for students to uh, to have reflective experience, to link theories and the practice to facilitate their understanding. And when the students finish their uh, education, they need to engage themselves in community or practice and to work with group of people to form the profession. And they also need to know the disciplines um, and some principles to organize, to manage the profession. 
In this whole framework of knowledge, I would like to say creativity is the driver to engage students to engage in deeper learning periods in STEM practice. And how to understand this? Uh, I would like to show another model. Um, probably some of you have heard about different levels of learning from this uh, uh, model. The first level is to remember. That means we can repeat some fact we learn from the classroom. And this is very typical a traditional examination uh, way when I was uh, in my primary school in China. We have to remember what we learned in, in the lecture, then we repeat those answers in the paper, in the examinations. And based on remembering, we need to be to understand. That means we can explain our own understanding and to answer some questions. And based on that is to apply. That means we look for the possibility to link theories and practice. And based on that is to engage in analysis. That means we can able to uh, compare, we able to combine something together or to find new patterns to link the new process or principle. Besides this, not only to do analysis about one's own learning, but also we need to evaluate others' uh, uh, learning outcome or learning process, give others comments. And the top of learning is to create. That means to design something new, to formulate some questions, or to invent some new method, or to modify or divide something new. And to create also means we need to gain uh, abilities to apply the knowledge across situations. In this science, knowledge, just like the money in our pocket, that we can take it in anywhere and we can manage ourselves to how to spend those money and to how to make us to make a survival to use the money. Yeah. So in this science, to be to create means to learn some transformable uh, experience, also along with this process. Uh, we engage a deeper and a deeper disciplinary knowledge skills and again, uh, employability. So this is a model, but in practice, individual learning always need to collaborate with others, especially in the problem solving process in practice of STEM. So creativity is about collaboration, I would like to say. Like in one of article I wrote, engineering practice, the nature is about cooperative enterprise. It needs a team of school people with different background abilities and responsibilities. So, and uh, maybe you also have learned creativity. There are a lot of methods to organize individual thinking process state, also to organize the group work like what we have done a lot of about the brainstorming session, our checklist, mapping, or wishful thinking with primary school students. And uh, also Chase tools is one of popular engineering invention method. Uh, and also uh, six highs I listed here is one of method to organize group work, to organize group discussion. This method help us to change our perspective, to facilitate we come up ideas in order, and also to uh, follow some principle to be creative individually in group work and reach to satisfying uh, solutions based on discussion. But only in collaboration, only in methods are not enough. Sometimes creativity just happen without why. Mm, it's kind of emergency, I would like to say. Just like in history, the, um, the discovery of penicillin, it was due to a mistake. The mistake gave the turning point of the history in medicine. And um, so in this science, creative ideas, the generation of the process happens in between routine and non-routine. And in the non-routine, uh, situation, it much depends on uh, people's insight, experience, or prior knowledge, 
all in kind of situated context. And um, so the key to uh, stimulate creativity also depends on how to facilitate the interplay between routine and non-routine. This drives us to rethink something more about how to foster a creative learning environment. And I use this model so much, I would like to share some points with you. And this is a social cultural perspective to think about creativity. And the, there are three corners we need to describe. The first corner is personal uh, background of individuals. And then uh, there is a field in the society, also the man in the culture. The field, that means some social organizations of the domain, they are a group of gatekeepers who decide what belongs to a domain and what does not. And the domain means the cap cultural capital is a simple system, including knowledge, skills, norm of value. And the individual, they produce some new ideas and share this idea to the field in the society. And the gatekeepers, they decide whether they need the new ideas or not, whether the ideas are creative or not. If they think the creativity there, then they facilitate this creative idea to the domain. And then this is part of culture. Just like um, we are using iPhone very much. And we know the, 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 the slogan of iPhone and the label of iPhone is Apple. And everybody know, oh, this is not only an Apple, it means the product. So this is part of culture, uh, the domain. It's kind of a symbol. And um, this is part of creativity. So maybe it is a bit boring, I think, to explain this. But if we locate this model into a school environment, it will be easier. When the students, they in, engage themselves in the active learning process, they have their ownership of learning, they express their interest and the motivation to learn something new. And then they produce some new ideas to the teachers in the classroom. If the teachers, they have enough awareness or recognition of creativity, then they will react very positively to encourage students to uh, pro produce small individual or group new ideas. And meanwhile, if the school management, if they also support this process, they may, they made new uh, regulations, supportive policies, also easier communication in the organizational structure or build up some facilities to support students' uh, learning experience, then that could be a basic framework to build up creative learning environment in a school. So this is my understanding from a systematical perspective, from school cultural perspective, to think about the interaction between learning, teaching, management, how to build alignment between the three in the school environment for creativity. And meanwhile, I would like to invite to look at the corner of teaching practice. It is the key to facilitate this whole process and the triangle. How to improve the teaching practice? How to let teachers have enough awareness and knowledge, skills about creative teaching? So this drove me some work about um, developing teacher education. If we look at the different levels of uh, learning, we can say to remember and to understand between the two levels, we need more effort about teacher-led or lecture-based theory folks teaching. And then based on that, from to apply to create, I would like to say we need more effort of student-centered model. In this model, we can think about the problem of project-based, inquiry-based, design-based, practice-based, where students have a lot of hands-on appearance. Um, but we need negotiation, cooperative efforts between teacher light and student center light. In this process, we are thinking about how to build up creative integrated STEM education. 
here I mentioned the integrated model because if we start a problem by learning, when students engage themselves in the problem solving process, it is always kind of interdisciplinarity. So it's not only work on mathematics, not only work on engineering or technology or science. So it's a kind of integrated model of STEM. In this science, STEM is only a whole unit. And yeah, and in this uh, designing and how to facilitate developing uh, teacher education, I have done much work about problem-based learning. Here, I list the three basic principles of problem-based learning. One principle is problem orientation and the project work. We use problem, real life problem, and the project work to organize student learning. And when students work those problems or work in the project work, they also work in the group learning context. They build up teamwork, the management learning by themselves. So, and in this process, teachers do a lot of work to facilitate the learning process. That means they are um, not going to give direct answers. They facilitate the learning process and they share learning methodologies, learning uh, experience with students. In this science, teachers, they are learning experts. They are sitting with students together. And I give an example about structure of PBL. Uh, for example, in one semester, if students are required to finish uh, 30 STIs, and we can design a five, 50% to engage in project work and 50% to learn courses. But the courses are supporting project work. And at the end of the course, uh, at the end of semester, students need to submit project report to engage themselves in the group examination or individual examination. So this is the curriculum design structure that translated from interplay between teacher light and student centered based on PDL, PBL model. Yeah, this is some theoretical understandings of in my work, uh, in, in my recent studies. Then I developed a lot of project work I would like to share today. <clears throat> One project is um, right now, I'm trying to work with other colleagues to develop a STEM teacher education program on creativity in Danish high schools. In this project, we um, will organize workshops with STEM teachers in high schools to teach them how to integrate creativity into PBL. <clears throat> if you look at the model in the left, in the call, it has the three principles of PBL. But meanwhile, I developed this statement with five dimensions. And the one dimension is problem solving. And the one dimension is group learning, interdisciplinary learning, projects management, facilitation, and evaluation. And I group creativity techniques or creativity measured in the five group to support the three principles of PBL. And in this integrative, in, in integration work, and I design aha moments as the core value of the training program. Because for the science students or technology students, it's more important to facilitate their thinking and to say, aha, that means a moment to get a new discovery. Also, it's an immediate uh, insight or response to a kind of new solutions, new funding. And uh, we try to encourage the high school teachers to connect the theories, subjects into practice and the bringing students with learning activities being both formal and informal. And we design different games to combine with creative thinking method to try to let students have playful and creative learning experience. So this is ongoing work I'm doing now. And uh, to think about uh, a bit uh, uh, earlier, 
I just finished a project design participation and facilitation of PBL uh, with a Chinese university, Northeastern University in China. Um, Northeastern University is one of leading university in Northeastern area in China. And uh, I am in collaboration with a group of STEM teaching staff and the researchers together to design uh, diverse models of PBL that can be applied in the local schools and local universities. How I organized this project. Before the, uh, at the beginning period of this project, we firstly defined the problem of practice. And I used questionnaire and interviews with those teaching staff to, um, to, to evaluate what are the problems in their teaching practice from a creativity perspective. And once the problems are defined, a group of the teaching staff, they were invited to come to Denmark to stay here for uh, five months, and they participate a series of workshops. Uh, normally we had 10 workshops with different themes of problem-based learning. We involve theories, discussions, seminars, observations into workshop. And meanwhile, the group of teaching staff from China, they form into little uh, group work and they, um, they work in the group project work and to design how to facilitate their local staff to engage more or engage a, a broader scope of teaching practice improvement by the tools they learned from workshop. And along this process, they also have group meetings and supervision meetings. So this is a very typical uh, model of training of trainers, TOT model. When they stay in Denmark, where they participate in the workshop and the group project work. And after that, they went back to China and they, it developed more methods and models with more colleagues and they engage themselves in the university or school-based training activities. They deliver or share, or share the knowledge they learn in Denmark to local context. Actually, this is a process of a localization of PBL in China. And finally, we had uh, evaluation based on their report and the presentation and the seminars. So this is the whole process of the projects that I have finished. And each year uh, between uh, 2011 and 2020, uh, there are uh, two groups from China, they come to Denmark. But the first two years, so we did very well uh, in physical context, but the last year, 2020, uh, we have to go, uh, went to online teaching because of the corona. So, yeah. And uh, here I would like to share more about uh, problem-based learning implementation in China based on my projects. Like a group of uh, teaching staff, they uh, finished a report which called Exploring uh, Strategies of Implying PBL at Northeastern University in China. In the report, we can say they, in, they apply PBL in different levels like to integrate PBL elements into single calls, between the calls, between the program. Also to initiate a new, develop a new teaching program like robotics engineering. What I'm sharing in the screen now on the top. And you can see this is a new bachelor education program from first semester to eighth semester. And at the beginning, the students have some fundamental courses, meanwhile to learn some basic theories and the project skills about PBL. And then from the third semester, they engage in projects like a robot motion control experiment and based on their specialized core courses. Then this happened until the last semester and the PBL elements become more and more in the curriculum. So that is why the designer of this curriculum called the progressive PBL process. Um, there are also other cases, but due to time, I cannot share more. Uh, this is only one I would like to share here. 
Um, another interesting project is creativity in technology design. I developed a signal Dennis research network for future digital society. Why I developed such a network? Because I do find there are so many uh, cultural differences between Denmark and China. And China is a society with a tightly organized. And here in Denmark, I think uh, we argue for more about um, uh, freedom and um, uh, it sounds like a more ideal uh, environment for creativity, but China is more collective efforts. So differences. And meanwhile, I thought, okay, technology design, especially digital technologies design, it's really a, a creative process from defining problem to, uh, to get a, a decision of the design. And also, especially, um, it is very necessary to link two pictures of user-driven design between Denmark and China. And uh, because the model of co-creation are so different um, to in the communication, in the collaboration, in the organization. So that was my motivation to do this project. And we organized a lot of workshop to uh, collaborate with different universities, a number of five universities in robotics, in software, in computer science, who are working on digital design areas. And we share different experience and how to design the new products in digital technologies. And one of the uh, actual outcome for me, myself, is that I found very interesting that Danish people and Chinese people, they have different understanding of humor in the group work communication. And because I found when my Danish colleagues suddenly laugh, I found the Chinese uh, uh, colleagues, they kept silent, they cannot understand the humor and how to explain and translate between each other. Then I did a small study to interview uh, the technology designers and uh, to ask themselves how they think about the humor and the playfulness in the innovation process and uh, how we can uh, get implication for teaching creative design by uh, useful humor in the teaching classroom. So if you are interested, I can share this article later. So, uh, these are some uh, projects I uh, would like to share here very briefly. But more uh, important is, I think, um, I would like to share some of my reflections based on my research and cross-cultural collaboration. Firstly, I would like to say creativity is easy because sometimes it just happens. It just needs our awareness to know, okay, this is creativity. We need to cherish that. But meanwhile, it is not easy because it involves so many influencing factors. Typically in creativity studies, people use this 4P model very much. And the influencing factors come from person, from psychological approach, from process, from cognitive process, from product perspective to see whether the learning outcome or the qualities, uh, whether it is creative or not. Also, we talk about the environmental uh, influences like the classroom, school, university, and the community that's about the place. But I would like to ask, why do we need creativity research? Why we need to investigate the problem of creativity and why we need to redesign STEM education from a creativity perspective? I want to say everything is for a better future. So it, we want to find how and how to better develop STEM students' creativity and how to better release their potential for a future. This is the fifth P in my research, I would like to add based on 4P. And another reflection I want to say, culture is something we usually forget, but we shouldn't forget it. It gives us a lot of power to think about the diversity of creativity models and the diversity of other research. It also provides a lot of resource in my research, like to introduce PBL to China and to think about the global perspective of PBL. 
and to think about arts, creativity, learning uh, in the global perspective. I also translate user innovation management from Danish, from the English version to Chinese version. So I think culture gives me kind of results to do my research. And based on the research, based on the cross-cultural collaboration, what I want to say is to facilitate the change from teacher-led model, traditional way, to student-centered model is not easy. It requires a lot of efforts uh, between the cultural translation, but it's not only about to translate language, translate a method, but also about to translate the culture. Uh, here, I would like to suggest that the language here is not only about oral language, like I speak Chinese or Danish or English, but also about the ways of communication to organize conversation, collaboration. It lays the common of the ground for co-creation kind of joint activity, making and doing. So I view myself as kind of cultural translator in the research, in the coordination. And finally, I would like to say, any research between cultural, the cross-cultural research, just like to set up a mirror between the cultures. We like invite the two models between the cultures to look at themselves from the mirror, to think about their own advantages and disadvantages, and to learn from others' advantages and to, uh, to learn between each other. So, I mean, any culture cannot be super perfect for STEM creativity development. So we need some efforts of self-evaluation for our own culture to realize what we need something more. And then that is the basic to build up more cross-cultural collaboration, to learn creativity between cultures. I think a bit longer than expected in my presentation. Now this is my last slide. So thank you very much. <laughs>